is The Walking Dead. Whoa, 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 this isn't The Walking Dead. Previously on how to overclock an i5 to 5 gigahertz quickly part 1. We're now in Windows, we'll open up CPU Z. So as you can see the process is at 4.4 gigahertz on 1.4 volts. So that's stable enough to run one Cinebench R15. It's got 603 CB. Six hundred and eighty six, we got a little bump in score there. So now we've got two options. We're at five gigahertz and we have um got a pretty decent score as well. So what we can do is we can either try for five point one gigahertz or we could lower this voltage down here. So I'm going to go for for 5.1 and see if that works. So here we are again, 5.1 volts, 5.1 volts, 5.1 gigahertz rather, 1.4 volts. Open Cinebench again. Now it looks like the system's crashed, and indeed it has, which isn't surprising because 5.1's very fast. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to uh, go back into the BIOS and put 5 GHz back in. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to start lowering this voltage, so I'd lower it 0 0.01 volts at a time, so we're going from 4 or 1.405 to 1.395 so open CPU Z again Check your voltage, 1.392. Run again. So as you can see, it's actually frozen again and crashed, which means this CPU needs pretty much exactly 1.4 volts and no lower to run 5 gigahertz in just Cinebench. So now, if you're happy with this overclock, what you would do is you'd put the voltage back up to um, 1.405 and you test that over a longer period of time um, uh, on a, a stress test like uh, IDA64 or OCCT I think it is or something like that anyway uh, and if it crashes on that then you might just want a little bit more voltage maybe you want to bump it down to 4.9 I don't know but 
we're gonna go for uh, we're gonna try and make 5.1 stable just in case some people want to go higher so what we're gonna do is actually we'll go 5.2 why not so we're gonna start at 1.48 volts I think This voltage for Sandy Bridge is safe to run 24-7, but your chip may degrade over time if you're running it literally 24 hours a day. I wouldn't recommend this, uh, but if you're just gaming on it for like 3-4 hours a day, maybe 6 hours and the next day none, then this should be fine for a couple of years. You might have to bump the voltage up every like six months, say, just a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's it's perfectly safe as long as you keep the CPU under 80 degrees C. So when you're doing this, you really want to monitor your temperatures. And if your computer's in a case, or you have different fans to me, or a different heat sink, you want to make sure that your computer. Um, can handle the heat. These chips run pretty cool, they're soldered. Uh, the lid's actually soldered to the um, to the die of the CPU. So you aren't going to have any issues with Ivy Bridge or like you would have with Ivy Bridge. Um, where the, uh, the thermal paste in between the heat spreader and the die is crap so you need to change that on these are soldered so they run as cool as they're ever going to run from the factory pretty much so as you saw there 4.18 volts didn't work or 1.48 volts rather so we're trying 1.5 volts this is about the highest you want to be running on say something like water cooling you don't really want to be running higher than 1.5 volts uh, on a, like a daily chip unless you're benchmarking and really on air cooling 1.5 volts is probably a, a bit far you want to definitely be on water cooling if you're, if you're at these voltages So there you go, 705 CB in Cinebench, not very hard to achieve on a 2500K, this has taken me under 20 minutes, which is pretty good going. So now just to get those last extra points, I'm actually going to run it uh, in real time, and also if I had an Nvidia card in instead of a uh, AMD card, that would also help. So, we're just going to close all of the crap that's running in the background, which there isn't too much on this SSD. So now we're just going to wait for it to finish the benchmark. So I think it's finished, has it? I don't know. It may have done, or it may have crashed. It's crashed. Oh, no it hasn't. 
think it's still running. Jump the gun a bit. Does it crash now? I think it's crashed. So we're going to go back into the BIOS. Give it a little tweak more. Only a tiny bit. And also we're going to go into the uh, the RAM timings because it's actually running uh, 2T again which is rubbish. So we're going to go 8, 11, 8. I won't bother doing any of these secondary timings but you can also get these uh, secondary and third timings uh, a lot tighter than this. I'm also going to put the RAM voltage up to 1.7 I don't know whether you saw before, because you couldn't see what I was doing, so I haven't focused the damn camera. But we're running 811, 826, 1T. At 5.2 GHz on air cooling. Hopefully this should work. Now we just want to have a quick check in CPU Z 5.2. Also, make sure the memory is running at the right speed at this time. So, want to close pretty much all of these things. Make sure you only tick CPU, because I think that's what I missed last time. Because otherwise when you done run all selected tests, it tries to do the OpenGL test and then the, uh, the multi-core test and the single core test, which is what it must have been doing last time. I'm an idiot. So this should take less than a minute, I think maybe 1 minute 20 I'll probably just speed it up so the mouse has moved there we go 717 points quite easily 5.2 gigahertz so there you go A few simple tweaks we've gone from 603 at 4.4 gigahertz all the way up to 717 and you can see there I haven't had to try too hard at all really to get that score now obviously you're not going to run this 24 7 but if you like doing a bit of benchmarking and you target 700 you can smash it quite easily with a 2600k this isn't my best one this is I've got like three of these at the moment so this is just uh, a random one of the two not best ones that I picked up. So yeah, that's pretty good. I wonder if I've got uh, any good scores on here. Yeah, you can see here uh, I've actually got 724 with a uh, 2550K, but I believe that was at 5.3 gigahertz. So. You can also see that it's hanging nearly with uh, these CPUs up here, which are i7s. Um, I don't think they were at stock. They may have been at 4 GHz or 4.4. So as you can see, an i7 isn't really that far ahead. So I think that about 
wraps up this video, so I suppose I'll see you guys next time.